no, little kitty. Don't say that. Because seeds are the reason we get fruits and vegetables. And their creation is no lesser than a wonder. Hey friends, in today's episode, let us learn about the formation of seeds and answer a life-brewing question. What is fertilization? Zoom in! Plants, they are nature's best gift to us as they provide food, clothes and even shelter because of which they are known as universal or primary producers. And as we know, just like other living things, plants have a life too. And just like us, they tend to respire, develop, excrete and also reproduce. Yes, my dear friends, plants majorly reproduce through three main steps, which are pollination, fertilization and lastly germination. We have already learned about pollination and germination in our previous videos, which leaves us with the process of fertilization and what is that? Fertilization can be defined as a process of sexual reproduction in plants, in which the male gametes or pollen merge with the female gametes or ovum to form a diploid zygote or the eggs that later develop into seeds. But the vital question is, how? Well, it all starts with flowers, which are the reproductive organs of plants. Yes, as we know, during the pollination process, the pollen gets transferred to the female reproductive organs and slips inside the ovary after which the pollen tube opens into the ovule and bursts into the embryo sac. Here, the male nucleus unites with the egg's nucleus inside the ovule where a zygote is formed. And how does this happen? For that, let us look inside the pollen first. Pollen grains are yellow powdery substances that consist of two layers. The outermost layer is called exine, which is generally thick. But there are certain areas where it gets thin, known as germ pores, while the thin inner layer is called intine, which contains two cells. The smaller one is called a generative cell, which divides to form two male gametes. And the larger one is called a tube cell, which gives rise to a pollen tube. Next comes the embryo sac, also known as the ovary, which has three cells called antipodals attached to the chalice. The sac also contains two nuclei in the middle, known as the polar nuclei. At the bottom are three cells above the micropyle, which is a small opening. Out of these three cells, the bigger one in the middle is the egg and the two smaller ones on either side are called the synergids. Now that we know the parts, let us see how these things work together to give birth to a seed. So once the pollen grains are dropped on the stigma, the pollen tube emerges from the germ pore and joins the micropyle of the embryo sac forming a route to the male gametes to enter the egg. The generative cell divides into two male gametes in the pollen tube and travels all the way down to the micropyle, where one of the gametes joins the egg and forms a diploid zygote, whereas the other gamete joins the two polar nuclei to form a triploid endosperm nucleus, which will transform into a nutritive tissue and provide nourishment to the developing embryo. This process is called double fertilization. Every flowering plant undergoes a double fertilization process at least once, after which the ovary transforms into fruit. And that is why we find seeds inside the fruit. Trivia time! 
Did you know the process of fertilization was first discovered by Ralph B. Strasberger in 1884? Also, if you observe a seed, you will often see the microfile as a small pore on it. Hope you learned something new in today's episode. Until next time, it's me, Dr. Binox, zooming out. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs>